So this is a new episode of Inspirato Projecto Podcast. We're currently on the bus to another day of filming for Black Pumpkin. I think this is day six, seven, six or seven. A lot of crazy magical things have been going on here. Uh, I'm helping out with the art department. I'm doing PA stuff. I'm an associate producer and sometimes acting in it. It's fun. It's thrilling. It's exciting. It's been teaching me so much about what is possible what you're truly capable of even with time constraints there have been numerous times where they said okay we're going to be shooting a scene and we need this set dressed we need this bedroom dressed we're going to shoot that scene we need that done you know in a couple hours and so we got to throw things together and put this thing together there have been a lot of last minute things too. Yesterday there was a, which it never even said in the script that there was a hockey stick, but um, all of a sudden we needed a hockey stick. So luckily we were able to get someone out there, get their hockey stick, and and bring it back in the time, you know, to shoot the scene. There's something else we needed was photos for the family. We don't have any photos of the family hanging out. So they asked me to go online and find. Uh, they asked me to go online. There's a little kid on the bus right now playing peekaboo. There's a little kid playing peekaboo. He's hiding behind the seat. Then he pops up. Um, <laughs> so, it's been... Um, interesting because we had to find photos for the family and so I had to go online I had to look for pictures of each of the kids each, you know the mom the daughter there's four of them and most of the ones that I could find were basically uh, headshots and there was one of the actress of Ellie Ellie, who plays Laura, Lori. Um, it was interesting because I found a picture of her. I tried to find pictures that looked candid, which was tricky to do. Uh, so I found this one of her wearing a hat, sunglasses, overalls, particular colored shirt, gray perhaps blue overalls standing there and uh, so I emailed it to Walgreens and then our our buddy Mike Mike Schley he printed them out put them in frames and there we go the crazy thing was I had no idea that Ellie was going to show up on set that day I had no idea she just showed up on set just to see how things were going, be a part of the the, the flow, and um, she showed up. Approaching and And she was wearing the exact same outfit, wearing the exact same outfit. There have been a number of things like this. There's an AD named Alex. Well, I played a character named Alex. On top of that, there's an actress in here named Alex, A-L-I-X. There's an electric guy here. And he's been, he, he looks like my buddy Brian, like a cross between Brian Wisniewski and Dana Carvey. And I end up finding out his name's Brian. There's a kid named Grayson who plays one of the one of the act one of the uh, uh, a character named or no his his name is Grayson he plays a character named Lawrence 
Well, a PA came on the set, and his name is Grayson. G R E Y S O N. And then the other Grayson is G R A Y S O N. I think there are others too. Oh, two mics. There are two mics. There's Mike Schley, who we got. And then Mike, the uh, focus puller. What else do we got? Yeah, it's just, it's just nuts. It's just, it's, there have been so many synchronistic moments happening, so many great things evolving. I've gotten lots of great education. Uh, from the sound guy, his name escapes me at the moment. He's got this little, this little hip, this little speaker on his hip that he always carries around. He'll play music in between, you know, while we're setting up for the next shot. So he'll play music. It's a great soundtrack. It keeps the the the, the vibrations flowing. It keeps everything moving, moving and grooving. So that's awesome. He's been teaching, uh, telling me about great bands. Wolfpack. Uh, the other day I heard him playing Jellyfish, which just blew blew me away. Mike, the focus puller, he was playing with LCD sound system. So I've been listening to those guys. Uh, the sound guy also told me about watching the Planet Earth and Planet uh, Blue Planet and Planet Earth series, do the documentaries. He was showing me pieces of like of of the documentary. Um, this one with the Birds of Paradise, which is just phenomenal. And I watched the first episode of the documentary, and sure enough, it had the, had those birds in it. A lot of interesting things. Oh, there's something we shot the other day in San Pedro. Uh, we shot some scenes. And one of the uh, actresses on set, one of the extras, her dad is a little guy. He... finding out he makes all these kind of apps he he writes his autobiography like every single day he writes his or he uh, yeah he writes down his autobiography what he did that day all the simple stuff what the weather was every just all the montaneity you know type stuff now what in addition to that he leaves longitudes and latitudes where he hides time capsules so anyone who in the future who comes who comes across his uh his book and reads his book and, li and goes through it. I mean, it's going to be a huge book because he's doing this for every single day of his life. Um, which would be such an interesting thing, such an interesting experiment if you think about it, like seeing how long it would take to read through volumes um, of someone's autobiography where they did it day by day. It'd be interesting to see how fast you could read through that and see how uh, how quick it would take like a speed reader to read through a person's entire life so this guy Bobby of course his name is Bobby he's a little guy I mean we could actually get him to play bloody Bobby now that I think about it as I'm saying this he hides these these uh, time capsules with like he said if anyone ever finds ever finds all the time capsules they will have acquired one hundred thousand dollars they have that ability of getting one hundred thousand dollars if they read through his biography and they they look for the the longitudes and latitudes so it's just it's just astounding because imagine this guy lives another, you know, 40 years, 50 years. It's 50 years of every day writing down his life. It's just astounding. It's just astounding. That stuff just fascinates me. There's something else 
Oh, yeah. So I've been in my paradigm, been thinking about Dungeons and Dragons lately. And one of the extras, one of the background extras on there, she said that she's a DM. She's dungeon master for her friends. And, uh, which is just awesome. And then all of a sudden this other kid chimed in who also is a dungeon master. So it was great to hear these kids geek out on uh, video games, their favorite cartoons, uh, all that stuff. So that other thing that Bobby guy said, that he's making an app for musicians. So for 40 bucks, I don't know if it's a one-time thing or each month. Um, they put their music on there, and then the music. It's kind of like with the a radio. I don't know if I should give. A, I'm not going to give this a, this trade secret away. I, I never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Let's just say he's involving some great apps for musicians. This whole experience here has just been a phenomenal one in terms of seeing the synergy that's going on on set. I rather I rarely ever use the word synergy. It's just, just such a good one. The easy flow and the easy going. Yeah, there are hiccups. Yeah, there are hitches. Yeah, um, they're running out of time to get all the shots that they want. However, whatever they are doing with what they have, they're doing great stuff. They're doing great stuff. It's fun to see all the guys in the art department gelling with each other. It's great to see people in different departments talking to other people in different departments about stuff and just watching the bonding experience. I mean, the fact that Ellie came by, even though she wasn't acting in any of the scenes, the fact that she wanted to come by and be a part of the set, be a part of the experience, the vibe, uh, it must be something special. It must be something special. Yeah, it must be something special to be a part of then if, if you want to come back to the set on your day off. What's cool too about this is that we've been able to bring in some of these uh, Chapman, Chapman University students. Uh, we had like a Chapman University film block during Kapow. And uh, I think this is the first feature film that this girl Miriam worked on. And so she was our AD, and I gotta tell you, with all these last minute changes, all this last minute stuff, it, it really throws a, a film student into the fire, you know, to see how, how crazy it can get how last minute stuff can get. If you can have a team who can roll with the punches, even though you got someone like John Marshall, you know, this this movie veteran of doing production design. Um, even though you got someone like him grumbling along the way, he's still quick on his feet. Uh, Mike builds stuff really quick, knows how to do electricity and all kinds of crazy stuff. He's even a survivalist. He's taught me so much about nutrition, about health. We talked. We had a great, lengthy conversation yesterday about aliens, the Anunnaki, all that, all those great things, all those great, delicious things. I listen to Abraham. I try to listen to Abraham as much as I can. My mission would be to listen to it once a day. Miss, uh, would you like to sit? Are you sure? Okay. What's so crazy too is that on the way to these film sets, uh, I'm hopping into these Ubers and coming across 
interesting people. I was in an Uber yesterday on the way to set. And he was talking with the Uber driver. I always like to ask the Uber drivers what they like to do outside of driving Uber. And uh, this guy told me that he's a dancer, he plays music, stuff like that. So he played some of his music for, for me. And I'm, you know, I'm learning more and more about this guy. Uh, and then it was a pool, it was one of those Uber pools. So they stopped, they picked up another guy. And so while the Uber driver and I are talking about stuff, the guy in the back seat asked him if he's from where the Uber, the, yeah, the Uber driver said that he had gone to a school in, in New York. And then the passenger said, Oh, uh, you and I, I think we have the same friends. I think we, I think we know the same people. And I thought, oh yeah, of course you do, of course. It's only part for the course, of course. <laughs> of course, it's only part for the course. Simply amazing. This stuff just continually fascinates me. Fascinates me. It was so great to be able to talk with Mike about the alien stuff. Talk about the um, nutrition stuff. I mean, he's got this whole, this whole, this, uh, he wrote this book, self-published a book, called Living the Infinity Diet. Now, how, how crazily appropriate is that? The Infinity Diet. I'm obsessed with infinity. And here he writes a book about the infinity diet. And I'm always looking for alternative means to, like my buddy, so Jack Bristow has Lyme, Lyme disease. So the uh, poor guy is always just dealing with all this, all this crap, dealing with just all the, all the side effects, all that stuff from, from, from Lyme. So I like to research online, see what I can find out to help him out, see if there are any herbs, any tinctures, etc., etc., seasoning, you know, I don't know, who knows what, vitamins, minerals, anything that can kind of help them out, so I'm always researching this stuff, looking up stuff, like, you know, and I came across the, the Rife machine, which is the machine that works off of frequencies, certain frequencies destroy certain, destroy certain parasites, they help help with certain things, concentration, you know, the binaural beats and isochronic tones. All those are just found. I call that brain wave entrainment. When you're playing that wave, your brain just links up with it. And if that's a wave that induces positivity, well then your brain is going to wake up, it's going to feel that, it's going to notice that. Now this Rife machine, the guy way back, oh, that's the other crazy thing. So I've been researching the Rife machine. Uh, I come come upon Black Pumpkin, and you know, and I'm talking with Mike. He's telling me about nutrition, and I bring up to him, "Oh, do you know about the Rife machine?" Of course, he knows about the Rife machine. I mean, it's brilliant. He knows all about the Rife machine. He's got a buddy who has a Rife machine. He um, he knows of doctors who've been threatened to have their businesses closed up if they don't stop using the rifle machine technology. It's crazy. It's, 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 it's nuts. So I come on set and learn about this from Mike. Rife, Rife, all of a sudden, guess what? The guy who's playing Flash, his name is Matt. I think his first name is Matt or Mike. Matt. His last name is Rife. Matt Rife, dude. How nuts is that? The stuff, it just keeps compiling. So... I, for, for the longest time, and I'll still, still continue, would record my synchronicities, dreams, all that stuff, onto, you know, onto my audio program and then download it and save it. Well, now I'm thinking I'm probably just going to do it here on Anchor. Probably just going to do it here on Anchor, make it a podcast. Why not? Just turn it into a podcast. Plus, what I'm going to do, too, I don't know how well you, you can hear me. Um, 
but, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to use this as a way to, it's a podcast, of course. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so it's a podcast, of course, however, in addition to that, it is a, an archive that I can just put up there, out there in the world. What gets me is that this thing goes out on the iTunes and all these other, all these other, uh, apparently all these other websites or places where people can, can hear the podcast. So, that's awesome to me. So, as the radio show is about the, the process. Uh, so the so will this this podcast as well be about the process, the process of creation. Yes, the the end result, the the, the genius aspect of of uh, the finished product is phenomenal. There's a great great satisfaction that comes from that. And then, of course, there's also the great satisfaction of moving the colors around, being the artist, moving the paint around, moving the colors around. The process of it being sloppy. Being sloppy, coloring outside the lines. That stuff is... That stuff is where it's at. Without the process, we wouldn't have a finished product. How funny is that? Without the acorn, we wouldn't have the tree. Incredible. Life is just such a fascinating thing. I imagine in a parallel universe, people on a bus like this all talking about their synchronicities, their abduction experiences, their UFO sightings the victories that they've had where they thought of you know where they intended on doing something and they followed through and they did it those would be great conversations and then others encouraging others to go you know you can do it too this is a dream I had and I did this and I tried this what's your dream okay here you go you can do this too Oh, the other thing, okay, so last night, last night, I came back from the end of the shoot, and I was just, I just, I didn't want to go to sleep, I didn't want to go to bed right away, so I stayed up a little bit, checked out Twitter, checked out Facebook, and I decided to ask Ellie, who plays Lori, I decided to see if she was on Facebook, I was going to send some pictures to her. Turns out, I already had a friend to request from her, waiting in the in the messages. I also brought up Abraham to her, and I brought up Abraham to her, and she said she listens to Abraham every day, which is extra brilliant. love how this stuff is just unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. It's like, it, it explodes my brain to think that all of this magic is out there. It's, it's like, it's waiting to be seen. It's waiting to be discovered. It's waiting to be noticed, pointed out, and celebrated. And the simple thing is, when we do reach out, we do celebrate it. It's excited. It wants to celebrate more. It wants to hang around. That's the vibe I feel from from all that is. I mean, how could we not relate to the universe at least on a on a on a human level? 
If we're composed of the universe, well then certainly the universe contains those vibrations. All of the vibrations. It contains the vibrations that we're trying to reach it on. All accessible vibrations, including all the ones that we haven't invented tools yet to be able to see. All those are existing. How beautiful is that? We have to search for it, then we find it. So we have to first invent the tool, then we see it. We have to believe it. Bashar was not joking. Believing is seeing. We believe it. We believe it's there. Go out there, we find it. Reminds me, of course, of like when we were creating Max Neptune and the Menacing Squid. During that time span of, of working on Max Neptune and the Menacing Squid, during that time span, During that time span, there were more huge, there were more giant squid sightings in the world than there were ever before. How cool is that? This is all around the time when I was just coming across. This is all coming around the time when I was... This is all happening around the time when I was just coming across. What the bleep do we know? The secret? Just just diving into whatever I could. Is it anything spiritual? Just trying to figure out how do I better connect with this stuff. And so then by applying it, Seeking it out. Next thing I know, I ended up coming across all of these other spiritual teachers, channelers, information givers. I was listening to Alan Watts religiously every night before I fell asleep. That was that went on for a few years, particularly during the years when I was substitute teaching. I would listen to that Alan Watts podcast, 15 minutes, there were 15-minute segments. And I'd listen to those things before I fell asleep, so the last thing I heard before I fell asleep at night was Alan Watts talking to me about Hinduism or Buddhism or what have you. Falling asleep, having all of that information <laughs> turn around in my brain, turning around in my brain like a smoothie. And then waking up and then going off and substitute teaching at the end to incorporate all of those little pieces of information and all those little pieces of revelation that beamed to me. Boy, I was just purely, purely a vibrating force of knowledge. It was astounding. Now, to be fair, while I was doing that, then also when I was coming across, when I came across the Bashar videos, I was watching those a lot. And I was uh, practicing Bashar's cube. And in addition to that, I was writing down my synchronicities. I was writing down my synchronicities. It was amplifying big time. It was blasting the future of America with gamma teaching blasting these students with information that they could carry on with them into their future and should they have any past lives, past life regressions, they will then of course remember that information. Remember that information something out of their brains. It was so thrilling to teach that one art class. It was such a dream come true for me to teach an art class. There were about 40 students in there. And I asked them, I said, raise your hand if you're here because you want to be here. And only about eight kids raised their, raised their hands. And I said, now for the rest of you who didn't raise your hands, why are you here? Oh, I, you know, I, 
I tried, I was going for something else, and I didn't get that elective, so they put me in art and all this stuff. And so then I said, well, how many of you like to draw? You know, raise your hands. How many of you don't like to draw? And I said, today's assignment, and this was the assignment that they were supposed to do. All they had to do, easiest thing in the world, write their name and decorate it however they wanted to put whatever kind of crazy anything, markers, crayons, whatever they wanted, they had to add it to their name. And of course, of course the girl on the bus just got down, she's got this big eyeball on her arm, which I was always in the habit of drawing eyeballs on my arm as well. Gosh. So many, so many amazing. So anyway, back to this uh, art class. So I told these kids, I said, I don't want to hear anybody ripping on anyone's art. I don't want to hear anybody putting anybody down, including yourself. Don't you dare put yourself down. I told them, if you hear someone who says, I can't draw, or this looks stupid, or this looks dumb, I want you to raise your hand and say, Mr. C, come over here right this instant. You, you have me come over there right that instant. And sure enough, people be like, Mr. C, I go over there, what's the issue, what's the issue? And they go, no, well, that girl, she says that she doesn't like how she's drawing. I said, you don't like what you're drawing? How dare you say that? Repeat after me, I love what I'm drawing right now. Oh, Mr. C, hey, repeat after me, I love what I'm drawing right now. I love what I'm drawing right now. I will continue to love what I'm drawing. I will continue to love what I'm drawing. But I don't, and then they would go, but I don't know what to do, I just don't know what to draw. And then I'd like make a star on there or draw a little stick figure or a swirly thing. Just do a bunch of dots, little circles or something. I'd say, okay, there you go, start from that. All I needed was that start, just the catalyst and that. That's the kindling of the fire. The process of creation. The process of creation. The process of creation. That's what this whole Inspirato Projecto thing is about. Taking what inspires us, utilizing it in our own projects, and then projecting it back out into the world for others to, to, to view, to take part of, to take a piece of. And then when they do that, that offers someone else the opportunity of being inspired by that. So each person's inspiration successfully lives on in the next person's artwork, which then goes all the way down the line. So there's, there's an unlimited amount of possibilities in which our inspiration can spread all at once very quickly. It's incredible. It's incredible. What's fun is remembering all of the times where we had an intention in doing something. We had our heart set on something. We followed our heart. We followed it. Not with despair or, oh no, I don't know if this will happen. But just pure, just pure. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's roll the dice. Let's roll the dice. Let's move and groove here. Let's just see what happens. Moving along. Surprises, surprises keep popping up. That's a fun thing by embracing that process. And I know I've talked about this so much. By embracing the process, what we're also embracing is the inevitable situation that everyone, you know, that I guess most people get into is editing, the editing process. So as long as we embrace the editing as part of the process where we know that 
we will most likely go through revisions on this thing when we realize that. We, we can then just take whatever comes our way. We don't have to get grumpy, we don't have to get upset, we don't have to get bent out of shape and go, oh, well, it's not going the way I wanted it, that, that I want it to, or it's not evolving the way that I envisioned it. Uh, you're just simply going, okay, this is what we got. This is dir the direction it's heading. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going with it. So then what happens then is that by embracing that, the editing process, that becomes the point. Let's see how sloppy we can get on this thing. Let's see how messy we can get on this thing. That's the funny thing is that that releases you from the chains of the paralysis of the analysis like my dad. And I believe my dad is the one who invented it. He, I don't think he ever heard it from someone. I think he invented it. Paralysis of analysis is a game, a game during the conversation we had one day. The puzzling thing that happened yesterday, I can't remember if I said this at the beginning of this or not, I had to go to site a little bit late because I had to pay my rent late. Uh, our checks for working and Black Pumpkin came through and so I had to, the bank didn't open until 10 a.m. yesterday. And I had Jenny, uh, Jenny's portion of the rent, 920. I went down there. To, to get the you know seventeen hundred dollars total for the for the rent, and they said I only had eight hundred dollars. So somehow, between being at home, some sometimes. And when I went to the bank, then it was only $800, so I don't know where that $120 went. I don't know what the hell happened to that. $120 just disappeared, so they said I was 75 bucks short. I couldn't pull out the money that I needed to pull out for my cashier's check. So, so simultaneously, what is crazy is that the Yachtly crew has been waiting to get paid for a charity that we did uh, about a month ago called Holly, Hollywood Cares. It was the Celebrity Poker Tournament. So we'd been waiting to get paid for that. Interesting thing. So as I'm talking with the people online about the fact that I, you know, I'm short, I didn't have the money that I thought I would. Right then, I get a message on Venmo. Right at that exact same moment that I was paid a hundred bucks for my, you know, for the Yachtly Cruise show at the uh, for the Celebrity Poker Tournament thing. So, right at that moment, right when I needed it. So these things, they, 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 these things, they just, they happen, you know, a lot, often, simultaneously. I, I just love it. And, and these are the experiences, these are the kinds of moments in life that we deserve to re, uh, remind ourselves of, remind ourselves of the fact that there are plenty of times in our life when 
plenty of times in our life when, when it, you know, something might have looked hopeless or, um, uh, you know, something looked hopeless or, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry, it's the end of the line and, you know, you're just, it's not going to work out for you. You're going to end up homeless this time. It's been plenty, you know, plenty of times like that. Uh, and yet, at that last minute, there's always something that swoops in. There's always something that swoops in. It's funny, when I was sitting there thinking about how I needed rent, you know, the other day I was sitting there thinking, okay, I need this rent, can I go rent? Then I thought, no, 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 I'm not going to need it. I'm just going to say to the universe, universe, you know what? You know what's so fun about this? Let's have a lot of fun with seeing how this rent is going to get paid, how you're going to bring bring extra fortune my way. Let's just see how that's going to work. You know, let's just play with it. And I'll take all the stress off my shoulders. Well, that's the other funny thing, too. Three days ago, I received a residual check from the Blues Brothers. That's what's so exciting about being an orphan in the Blues Brothers is that I get those residual checks maybe three times a year, maybe four times a year. So this check happened to be 45 bucks. Well, that's great. So now I can deposit that in my bank. Pay another bill. Like, all oh, that came at just the right time. I also trust that the universe is going to reveal that $120 somehow. Somehow. It's going to pop back up. I don't know how. But somehow. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be unexpected. It's going to arrive out of the ordinary, as per usual. It's going to thrill me to pieces and become yet another example of the magic of the universe. So... That's all for now. This concludes another episode of Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto.